Happy Friday. Thanks for spending yours with Chuck and Chernoff on the fan. You're welcome. I wasn't, talking, I wasn't speaking to you. I was talking oh, to them. I was going to say, management said I had to come here. Just know this. Uh, the president is due in town any minute, so traffic's going to be a bear. So uh, make <laughs> the proper uh, adjustments to your travel day. Uh, I hope you guys are following us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, because that's where you're going to keep up with everything happening on the radio station. In fact, we posted several videos yesterday, including our audio elimination draft which was somewhere in the neighborhood of 20, 21,000 views. You can see that. Keep up with where we're going to be, behind-the-scenes fun, all of it on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Coming up in five minutes, the Ant-Man is causing quite the stir and an interesting debate. Women, should they be allowed to vote? That's it's not the debate. It's a debate between NBA folks, and I'm guessing the Hawks are among the group having that debate right now. We'll tell you about it in five minutes. Lo, so what I'm going to say here is I promise you not being critical of Kirby Smart. I think it's just something Kirby would tell you if he was on the radio with us right now. If I said um, being number seven in any list or ranking for Kirby Smart is not good enough, I think Georgia fans would agree. I think Kirby would agree. He didn't come here to be number five or number six or number seven. I think Kirby realized I stayed at Alabama as long as I did because I wanted to pick the best place to go, and it just so happened well, Georgia opened up. He's familiar. He knows what they have. He knows the potential, and he knows it could be a great destination. So when I see Bruce Feldman of The Athletic, who ranked his top 25 head coaches in college football, and he's got Kirby at number seven, I would tell you right now, Kirby, well, he wouldn't care about somebody else's opinion of where he's ranked, would tell you we shouldn't be seven in any rankings, recruiting rankings, playoff rankings, party school rankings. We should never be number seven. Georgia was seven plenty of times under Mark Richt, and they were a good program just like they're a really good program now. But, Los, when I read Feldman here, he writes, Kirby would be even higher on this list if his teams hadn't been blown out the way they have, losing twice to LSU by a combined 47 points, losing to Auburn by 23 points. There was also the 31-point lost Ole Miss in his debut season, meaning that Georgia's lost by 20 or more points every season under Kirby. Did we forget that? They played Auburn twice that year. Yeah, right. Yeah. And I think that was a blowout the opposite direction. He says the hunch here is Georgia may be primed for a national championship run with the addition of Todd Munkin, which he writes, I like that move and I'm high on it. And Wake Forest transfer quarterback Jamie Newman in a year where both Bam and LSU have to replace their star quarterbacks. Now we want the monk. You got the monk. Give us the monk. So that's just Feldman's opinion. Stuart Mandel had the same kind of list. He ranked Kirby fifth. And I don't really care. I'm, you know, I'm not making a big deal where you are five, six, or seven, but I know this for a fact. You brought Kirby into Georgia to do what Dabo's doing to Clemson. I mean, that's exactly why Kirby Smart is here, and it's why you moved off Mark Richt. Uh, Kirby's done a really good job. Nobody's denying that. But you can write these things off and just say it doesn't matter. It's just somebody's opinion. That's what these rankings are. But so are recruiting rankings. Sadly, in college football, so are playoff rankings. They're just opinions. Los, I can make a great case that today, Kirby Smart could be two or three already. With those two games that you had, I think, in hand against Alabama, you're talking about winning a natty, and you're also talking about making a playoff. Who knows? Maybe you have a second ring, and everything that people are writing and saying about Dabo, they could already be saying about Kirby Smart with those two games being the difference in his four years here on the job at Georgia. Well, you're set in a position where the, the highest you can get is third. Because everything's going to start with Nick Saban and Dabo Swinney, and, and rightfully it absolutely should. But it's going to require a national championship to enter that discussion. Now, I saw Bruce Feldman's article, and I did take exception. I'm the second biggest James Franklin guy in town. I guess Chuck is number one. His ranking really shocked me. James Franklin being third, that's What's the surprising. basis? He's got a Big Ten title a couple of years ago, but that's, mm. that's essentially it. Now, he's been a turnaround artist. That yeah. the, he, the best that Vandy has been in years was under him, and... And getting things and taking over for Bill, Bill, Bill O'Brien and running with it at Penn State, good, you're a quality coach. But it still comes back to accolades. There, there still has to be big games consistently. And I think that's where you're, the arrows pointed up with Kirby Smart. You're playing in more big games on a regular basis than you ever have in the recent, what, 10 or 15 years, where every year it's here's a Rose Bowl, here's a Sugar Bowl, here's a Sugar Bowl, here's three straight uh, SEC championship games. You're in that mix. It's just about breaking through. Yeah, I think Kirby will break through at some point. I think it's going to happen. I don't know if it happens this year. It happens next year. It's going to happen at some point. But to look at a list like this, and again, all opinion, and to see Kirby behind James Franklin, Ed Ogeron, Lincoln Riley, who Kirby beat, and Jimbo Fisher, I could tell you Kirby should be ahead of Jimbo, but whatever Feldman's rationale for putting him there. 
Once you get past two or three, I don't care what the ranking order is. Just, but it, it's got to be consistent. If you're it going does, to, if you're going to point out some sort of he lost by this, uh, Oklahoma has been smashed mm -hmm. the last two years in the playoffs, where clearly they did not belong. They could have had 80 points scored on them in in the game against LSU. And so, if you're going to downgrade Kirby for regular season losses to LSU and Auburn where they didn't play well, then you can't tell me about how you're elevating a guy who's had postseason losses where they're not even close. I would agree. But like I said, I don't care if you're four, five, six, or seven. Kirby Smart would tell you four, five, six, or seven is not why I'm here. Kirby's got so much going for him. If you consider what he's stockpiled in four- and five-star recruits over the last three years more than anybody, he's had quarterback stability over the last three years. He's had a ton of NFL players on his roster, including first-round picks everywhere. Roquan. Uh, Sony, Isaiah Wynn, Leonard Floyd, DeAndre Baker. This year he'll add DeAndre Swift and Andrew Thomas. By the way, Chubb and, and Miko weren't far behind in the second round. Kirby doesn't have to apologize for the run he's had. He's had a really, really good run, but Georgia is now in a place, and Kirby would tell you this, we don't want to be really good. We don't want to be really, really good. We want to be great. Kirby's 44-12 and 12 in his 56 games in four years at Georgia. Mark Richt was 46 and 10. I only bring it up because you were in this place before where you were really, really good, and it points out how bleeping hard it is to break through, to join that, as Lowe's pointed out, top two or three by winning that national championship. I don't know if LSU is going to be able to sustain, but I know they've done the one part. They've broken through. They won that championship, and that's where Georgia and Kirby have to get to for these lists to say you're one, two, or three at some point. It does feel different in part because we have the playoffs. So a one-loss team, because there were Georgia teams where, hey, look, they're 11-1. and one. Well, 11-1 and one didn't equate to getting a chance to play for a national championship. Now you're in the playoffs. You have that opportunity. I, I think it also feels different in part because you're not dealing with a monster uh, at Tennessee or a monster uh, in Gainesville right. or Florida. Yeah. You are the monster. Yep. And so it, it has that different feel of, hey, Kirby's 44-12. and 12. It feels different than Mark Ricks because you always knew – by the end of October, I got to deal with that thing in Gainesville. I got to go to Jacksonville and deal with that monster. And if I win, okay, my season's alive. If I lose, everything's done with. And that doesn't have that same feel now when you play Florida. It is kind of a strange thing. And, again, it speaks to how good Georgia can be and how good they were in, in Mark Rick's first four or five years that, again, the, the accomplishments, both won SEC titles. Kirby's won three SEC East. Mark Rick won two. Rick's fifth season on the job was his second SEC championship, and that's where Kirby's trying to take this next step. So, Again, I don't care that Feldman has him seven. I don't care that Stuart Mandel has him fifth. I think Kirby would tell you, I don't care about any of these lists, but like I care about recruiting rankings or playoff rankings, when you have these, you want to be one or two. You want to be three, and that's winning a national championship, which is the next step for Kirby Smart.